the clear lines give your differentiation between all of your mediums and lights. And then you can see this nice light shade that we just barely speckled on there. And you can see it come through quite a bit. One down and uh, <laughs> 440 to go. There's a little collet that goes in the end of the tubing that holds the glass on, and then this is what the glass actually goes into. The chandelier goes from 18 inch pieces, which are about this big, down to the last bead on the chandelier is two millimeters, um, which is uh, about a twelfth of an inch. Now they're working on these wonderful pieces. They're actually blown, actually torch worked and completely organic. Because if they get too complicated, then they're gonna upstage all those other pieces that have, you right. know, it's almost like okay. all those flat pieces have got to like, just sort of become liquid, real liquefied, you know? Well, let me so. do, let me get a flat one. Do another process. Let me try, yeah. And then we can twist some of those yeah. two if yeah. you want to, but let me do. Let me yeah, see what you can do with sort of a more, sort of a morphic. I work in many different materials, so it's very important that I work with craftspeople and artisans and that they're willing to stretch their own selves and their own limits uh, in order to achieve the, the work that we do. So we were in good hands there. You see, that's nice, that's nice, because again, it's something you wouldn't get in a, in a, in a slump. Right. You know? Lonnie incorporated the old arms from Italy that were from a century-old chandelier. This is the center core basis of the chandelier design. We came upon a shop and we said, what's that? And he took us in and he said, this is an upside down Christmas tree that dates back to the Napoleon era. Yeah. So the chandelier was made in Venice around the time of Napoleon. Yes. We had it shipped back and it was stored in Denver. For what? I mean, 23 years? 20 some years. Terrible. Never been hung, just moved yeah. around from warehouse to warehouse. Again, it was through a lot of experience and, and careful planning that we were able to use as many old parts of it as we, as we used. We used most of the, of the parts. That painting called uh, Ascension that was actually inspired by a, a poem, William Blake's poem, the first stanzas of which you recognize instantly, to see a world in a grain of sand, a heaven in a wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hands and eternity in an hour. They're made in sections over a period of a year, and I had to use a, a very large factory space to assemble all these pieces. Uh, various parts are made in different ways, and, and uh, they dry at different temperatures. That painting isn't simply on the surface. It's painted front and back, and it's actually impregnated, uh, if you will. When I see a thought, and I, I want to get it down quickly and put it down and to, to reattach pieces or disconnect them. And sometimes I'll lay them down. And as I say, two weeks, a month, three months later, I'll say, that, that, that doesn't work there anymore. Often, I see the whole finished piece in my head in advance. And I always track with it, no matter how, I get, how lost I get in the process. And sometimes I intentionally try to lose myself and not you know, construct anything in any logical way, but allow chance and randomness and all those wonderful elements, accidents, to happen. It's a completely intuitive, spontaneous, often confounding process because the pieces have to tell you where they want to go. A texture, a color, a form will just drop down another piece and you know 
it was meant to be there. It's just, you can't argue, you can't refute it in a way. It's almost like we say in science, there's a ring of truth, you know? You see it and your soul connects with it and you know it was meant to be and everything else can change uh, accordingly. But it's a very organic, spontaneous way of constructing your, your thoughts and feelings and allowing them to just find their way. Some of, some of the great, <laughs> great moments from film, like um, the Pope looking up in the agony and ecstasy and saying to Michelangelo, when is it going to be finished? This building was a bit reminiscent of that. This is my Bible. And this is what I have to go off of. I think there's, what, 1,200? 1,500 pieces for this project. If one's off, you know, within a 30 seconds of an inch, nothing will work. See, I have a little too much mud underneath of it, so I need to pull it up and take some off. Putting it down, they had to use suction cups because it absolutely had to go straight in. And then, just to check what he had under it so he didn't have voids or too much, because if he had too much, he couldn't get it down. He'd have to pull that up. You know, it's like something flat stuck in the mud and you try to pick it up. You know, it's like you're picking up the whole yard. I mean, it's just like that. One more time. That's what you want. It was a very physically demanding process to lay those pieces at that precision. The moment of truth is coming soon for Roger. I said, the moment of truth is coming close for you right now to see if this one fits in. And we do have to get it remade. Because the million dollar water jet machines aren't always perfect. It, it's not uh, changing the, the overall radius, which means we're within, we're not growing in width, which means uh, if that were the case, each time we start another ring, it would get wider, it would grow wider, and then pretty soon the gaps would get larger, and then uh, once we got to that lunation ring, you can't hide a, a joint. I mean, there, there's so many lunations with so many divisions, and um, we'd probably have to redraw the whole thing, but. Uh, I don't think we're going to have to do that. I could not do that. I could not be where that guy is. No way. This is going to be one day. <laughs> this is going to be one hell of a day. That's what I'm thinking. Well, it was very frightening to, to work with such old materials and the contemporary materials in a construction site. There were some real close calls. The very delicate balance of knowing how hard to, uh, how, how you can push glass and how you can't push glass and, and getting it to all fit very, very precisely. It has hundreds and hundreds of pieces. I was, I, I was very blessed to have John Abbott of Bella Glass um, did the all what we would call practical engineering or shop engineering because every piece had to have safety features very often, every piece had to be attached to another piece without vibrating or without shocking. Um, and each piece was a different size, uh, different shape, 